Good afternoon. Welcome to Phoenix today. I'm Anupam Murethi and today I'm joined by Alice Masters and Jordan Maples. Today on the show, we have Ed Sheeran who joins the list of celebrities who have married their childhood sweethearts. 27,000 youths in the UK identify as being part of a gang. We're talking blue passports and a dressing letter with so. All things with love or hate to bring back. And I think the most, one of the most shocking stories we have today is about Momo a game which is encouraging children to do dangerous things such as committing suicide, harming themselves and even killing their parents. And we're also going to talk about our hottest February on record. That's all later. We're opening today's show with some happy news. Brit, Brit Award winner Ed Sheeran married his childhood sweetheart Cherie in a small intimate, in a small intimate gathering in Suffolk earlier this month. What's maybe the most amazing thing about this is that we haven't seen any pictures and no one knew what was happening. How do they manage that, Ivan? Yeah, I mean, they've done very well to keep it under the wraps for now, but we also need to uh, bear in mind that uh, it's, it's happened very recently, so pictures might still surface yet. And uh, as regards the affair itself, I believe, I mean, uh, celebrities, it is not the first instance uh, when a uh, celebrity has gone on to marry or do something private Anapal, and has also think, managed to keep it. I think a lot of celebrities have managed it. It's not that much of a big deal. Like, yeah. a lot of celebrities have managed to keep a secret about that. Exactly, that's life. what my point was. I mean, uh, unless, Alice, do you have something different to say about that? No, um, I just think, I just can't get over the fact that we haven't seen a single picture. I quite wanted to. Yeah, uh, we, we might just yet. There's still time. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, who would want to see a picture of Ed Sheeran, really? Not exactly a looker, is he? Well, can't disagree with that. <laughs> anyway, knife and gun crime in the country are at an, are at an all-time high. And Coventry is not uh, untouched by it. Lots of funding and uh, lots of new resources and fundings have been put in to improve the situation. However, not many are sure that the outcome of such uh, a measure has been really positive. Um, ladies, what do you think about that? It's a little bit too late really, isn't it? Imagine how many people, how many Coventry lo locals have actually died, like from knife crime, gun crime, gang crime. A lot of them have died. This should have came a lot earlier. I think we also got to remember that we saw police numbers being massively reduced in Coventry this year. I think they've been halved, you know, the amount of policemen patrolling our streets. Is that affecting why we've had the particularly big crime rates this year? Don't, don't you know. think the money should have came earlier? Yeah, I mean, uh, the way I see it, uh, the loss of youth is the most irreparable loss ever. Anyway, we must move on. Jordan. It's your clue. Coming up later, we'll be talking about the Momo Challenge, which is a controversial talking point recently. We'll be also bringing up the weather and the obvious changes of it. So right now, we have a game to play, one that we would like to call, Should We Bring It Back? First off, a newspaper in Oxfordshire has controversially first this decision asking people not to address their NHS as their um, after a lot of reader backlash saying that it was significant and traditional and that they loved using it. But it, what do you think, Annie Pam? Do you think, sir, it, do you think it's sexist? I mean, I do not think it's, uh, it's really sexist. Uh, but at the same time, I'm uh, one of those old school people who like to uh, sometimes keep traditions just for the sake of it. And uh, I don't know, but I think Jordan might have a different view on it. I definitely think, think if we're going to bring Sir back, then it should be Sir Madam, make it all inclusive. Like it may, You may not think it's sexist, but it's not very inclusive, is it? Not at all. What do you think about this? I think that we've got to remember that the editor of this paper is a man, and I don't have a problem with us addressing a male editor, mm -hmm. so... But the yeah. general, does, does the audience know this? Does everyone know this? It's not a fact that I wouldn't know if the, the Sun newspaper's editor is a man or a woman, would you? It's not a well-known fact. Sir or madam would be a lot more inclusive. Yeah, I mean, uh, now definitely I agree with that. 
and uh, it's also one of the uh, sometimes i believe it's one of these uh, those instances which uh, get played a bit more than uh, they should in the mainstream media um and our next our next should we bring it back is the blue passport there's been a lot of calls for our burgundy passports to go blue in the wake of brexit so anipam what do you think blue passports i mean uh, what we need to take into consideration is it's not the pa- it's not the color of the passport that is important but what it signifies as uh, for the citizen of uh, for the citizen that is the holder of that passport that is more important i mean i come from india and i do have a blue passport so color for me is not a problem it's rather what it stands for that is the main consideration yeah i think it's worth mentioning that maybe to change the color of a passport would It's not an easy or an inexpensive thing to do. So it's pro- it's providing a function. I, I don't mean, think the colors particularly relevant today. I mean, I'm not saying it would be an easy or relevant decision to do, but I'm, I am saying like if we wanted to change it to blue, then it would only be the passports going forward and eventually phase it out. It wouldn't be like all of our passports would have to be blue it, it would be we phase it out and eventually in let's say 50 years time all of the passports would be blue so if we wanted to change it personally i want to stick to red i like the color red if we wanted to change it it wouldn't be that much of an issue anyway we can talk about it forever but we must move on and the next on the topic uh, and the next on the and the next topic is uh, the f- uh, the show friends all the fans out there there's a possibility that the show might come back that the question that uh, millions of fans are asking is whether the show would come back in its older format would it have the same cast or would it would it be a complete revamp of the cast ladies what do you think about this what's your I take on this i do think that i'm not a massive fan of friends it's not a tv show i've ever seen um but we do get it a lot with them at the tv shows you know should we bring it back um i believe it is a show that's run for quite a few seasons mm-hmm, it did um just like other shows like er grey's anatomy these shows they can't run forever you know they seem they're more exclusive and people like them more yeah jordan i genuinely think we should bring it back for one special like all of us love rachel monica channel we all love them if they can come back in their 40s 50s whatever they are now and still create the same brilliant characters Go for it, one-off show, and then see how it goes. These people get paid millions; they'll be up for it. Well, I think that all good things must come to an end, and uh, so is the French show, show. And uh, some good things that come to end should remain that way. End it. Anyway, Alice, what's the weather like out there? Parents and children are on in the UK and the US. <laughs> I've been bombarded with the news of Momo, a cartoon that appears in YouTube videos and tells children to do naughty things such as turn the hob on, pull their sister's hair, or even kill someone. However, YouTube claims that this is fake news and unfortunately isn't happening. What do you guys think? Do you think it's happening? Momo, have you I mean, heard about uh, it? Oh again, I would say that uh, I am uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, children are uh, children under a certain age uh, uh, when they're using their mobile phones or tablets or anything that has app and especially an app that downloads a lot of data from the internet that the use of that a uh, that uh, that particular app should be supervised by adults because children I believe are very easily influenced and uh, that can be a bit problematic So Anna Pam, it's the 21st century. Tablets, computers, they're everywhere. They have to do a homework on them. Eventually, they are gonna turn up like something they, that they shouldn't see on the internet. Obviously, we don't want it to happen, but if it's gonna happen, then it's gonna happen. Do you get what I mean? Alice, do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, I mean, I do think there's a reason that we didn't have this particular problem when we were younger, and that's because we weren't, you know, left with phones and tablets. and a lot of the children that have been involved in this they've been very young and i i personally don't think we should be encouraging kids to use as much tech especially as they advise but i think with teaching and just the technology development nowadays we must encourage it i mean i think uh, technology and apps even if they can't be supervised i'm sure the use of internet can be still can still be supervised 
So that's my take on it. Alice? Yeah, so we're also going to talk about our, about the weather we have. This has been one of the hottest Februarys on record. And it was Tuesday that broke the mercury on this. It was 21.2 degrees in Kew Gardens in February. I mean, Can't three weeks that. ago, I believe we had snow. Um, but it's, it's a concerning trend. Do you think it's about? I think it's very concerning trend, especially the drastic na the drastic nature of the change uh, that has taken place. I mean, I remember last year uh, we were coming to the uni, and it was, uh, the uni was shut actually because it was snowing so heavily. And this year it's like all warm, and I mean it's very pleasant, but at the same time it's very concerning. Climate change is an issue that we need to we need to tell people about climate issue. I know it's an issue that we've all heard. But honestly, it needs to be drilled into people. We are killing this planet. Like, honestly, killing it. Could you imagine what it's going to be like in 20 years in January? Could you imagine it be 30 degrees? Uh, I think, um, anyway, I think uh, that's uh, all the time. That's all we have uh, for you from this show. And we hope you liked it. And thanks for joining us. Uh, and we hope you, uh, you have a good day. And it's goodbye from us. Bye. Bye.